like to thank the uh, uh, ICFP for putting on an American Functional Programming uh, session. I think this is a very good thing. Also, um, my good friend Susan Wallace uh, uh, gave me some good um, constructive criticism on this uh, presentation. Really improved it quite a bit. So, like, uh, math can be hard in, in um, you know, strict type uh, functional programming like Haskell. Like, if we were using a linear library and you just tried to take a quaternion and multiply it by a vector, it'll give you a type error. And uh, so that makes it a, a little bit more difficult to, uh, there, there's more of a layer standing between you. Uh, the type system really kind of gives you more restrictions than you really want. Uh, and this would be sort of important because uh, linear uses um, sort of a sandwich transformation of quaternions to rotate a vector. And uh, that takes more multiplications and adds than if you just make a form a rotor and do a single um, multiplication from the left hand side. So we can uh, work around some of these issues by using um, some geometric algebra. Um, and uh, it unifies many of the concepts. So it can all be uh, contained within a single type, like reals and vectors, quaternions, um, and so on. We'll get, get into more of everything. But so uh, geometric algebra is a real Clifford algebra. And uh, uh, the three-dimensional uh, Clifford algebra, like a Euclidean space time, um, is known as the algebra of physical space. And uh, this algebra is isomorphic to two by two complex matrices. And uh, it's easiest to see this isomorphism uh, with uh, basis vectors in um, the algebra of physical space are actually isomorphic to the Pauli matrices for two by two complex matrices. And so uh, the matrix algebra that we're dealing with kind of guides the whole implementation of this library because we always want to make sure that we get the same results with uh, matrix operations as we uh, would in, say, the algebra of physical space. So it's um, one, one way that we can actually go in and validate uh, the implementation. So uh, this Clifford algebra, uh, it's a graded algebra. It's got uh, four grades. Um, the grades are elements that will stay the same grade, remain the same grade when you're, you add them. And we, uh, I specialize to single graded elements, uh, double graded elements, and sort of the general case. And then uh, in Haskell, um, we can model this with the algebraic data type. And uh, it's got sort of the single graded elements on the bottom, uh, the real numbers, three-dimensional vectors, five vectors, imaginary numbers, and uh, then we get it to... Um, so the, to put words by each constructor, right? We have these real subalgebra, uh, subalgebra for real numbers, quaternions, and uh, complex numbers. And then we have other things like bivectors, which is it geometrically we represent an oriented uh, plane uh, or uh, um, imaginary numbers can represent a um, like a oriented uh, volume element and then uh, getting into other things like a pair vector that's actually a real number uh, plus a vector and so it's sort of useful in uh, say something like modeling special relativity for like a four vector by pair of vectors uh, have, are useful in modeling uh, uh, electromagnetic fields and, and uh, special relativity. And then for the Haskell implementation, we have the uh, constructors and then um, some nomenclature uh, for the, uh, uh, the uh, multi vectors. Now, to multiply uh, these basis elements, um, we got the following multiplication table. 
But one of the important things, uh, the way we represent uh, uh, E1 vector uh, with the outer product of the E2 vector is calling E1, E2. And then the other way around would be an E2, E1. Um, these anti -communities. so it's a non-commutative algebra. Um, we also have uh, E1, E2, and E3. They all square to 1. So uh, that's useful. But then the, uh, the bivectors all square to negative 1. And then the trivector also squares to negative so that's where the uh, isomorphism with kind of, uh, imaginary numbers comes into play. Um, and so if we look at uh, multiplication of constructors, it, it kind of has its own uh, multiplication table. And uh, you can kind of see these subalgebras where you take a real times a real and get a real number or a uh, um, quaternion times a quaternion and get a quaternion. And you can kind of see where the, that ring forms for the algebras. And then this is uh, all specialized. So if, if we were to not specialize it and just do like an APS times an APS, you get um, similar results, uh, but it would have the computational cost of multiplying two, uh, com uh, two, two Two by two complex matrices, where by using the uh, algebraic data types, we can reduce the amount of multiplies and adds that are necessary to do these computations. Uh, so, we also uh, a useful thing to use is uh, to be able to control what constructor is being um, applied and to apply these constructors to reduce them to make a, a simpler constructor that would have less computational costs if you do more uh, operations. So we have two types of, one, one sort of a, con, a coercion where it forces a specific constructor and drops all the other uh, grades. And then um, this is very useful and it combines with uh, Haskell's lazy, lazy evaluation to sort of not compute, not compute all of the uh, grades that are being dropped or or uh, or added, and then the reduce function it only drops grades that are already zero, and then uh, but it, it has to do a comparison on on each grade to see if it is zero or zero ish, and then uh, and so that's a little bit more computationally expensive type of operation. So uh, functions of Clifford's. Uh, something important in, in special relativity is um, the use of these hyperbolic uh, transformations like in uh, Lorentz transformation, rotations or something like that, boosts, boosts and rotations. And so uh, it, it's pretty convenient to be able to write uh, software that's kind of in a simple form uh, you know, uh, a vector divided by a real, and that would be a vector. And then uh, to do like our tangent on a vector, and you get our tangent. And then some, sometimes it actually changes grades when you have a um, function on the Clifford, like a, the hyperbolic cosine of the rapidity will give you the gamma, which is an actual real number. Uh, so it kind of reduces from a vector to Real. And then, um, like an exponential of this vector is a paravector uh, for a boost or something like that. And so, um, it's it's uh, pretty beneficial to have something that will take care of all that for you and uh, give you uh, correct answers. Um, so, all of these uh, functions that we calculate have to give you the same result as a matrix function. Uh, because of this isomorphism. So. And then, uh, so like a difference between linear and CL3 is uh, linear views the vector as like a data structure. And so it kind of maps or, you know, F maps the exponential across the data structure where by following the, um, the 
you know, doing a spectral projection of this function, uh, like you would on the matrix function, um, it actually generates a different answer for the, the, the same um, vector, because, because in the algebra physical space, the exponential of a vector is a paravector. Okay, so uh, this method works for any holomorphic function. And if we take, for instance, like the logarithm, uh, potential logarithm, um, you have to uh, you, uh, specialize this uh, function for real, imaginary, and complex numbers. Then we have a general case that handles everything else uh, that doesn't pattern match with, with those numbers. It also requires the derivative of the logarithm, uh, or the derivative of the whatever function you're using. And uh, so this would um, call the spectral decomposition function. Uh, so for all the scalar cases, the spectral decomposition, we first perform a, a, a call or reduce on the Clifford and reduce that to a simpler form because it might have missed the initial pattern match. And so then we just recursively call that function again and it'll um, make the, uh, um, it'll calculate the function. For um, constructors that have a grade one or grade two, but not grade one and grade two, um, this is specialized uh, for single vector grades. And then because of, we know these vector grades, we also have information about the eigenvalues that are involved in, um, for each of these grades. So we can uh, send in a specializing function to um, use a simpler form of, of the, the uh, function that we call. And so we can do that for reals, imaginaries, and complex numbers. And that, that'll work for um, six of our <laughs> constructors. And then uh, to do this uh, specialized spectral decomposition, um, we have a function that takes our specializer and then um, the clipper and then uh, gets a projector um, to complement the projector and the two eigenvalues. And then to calculate the function, you just call the function on the eigenvalue and then multiply it by the constructor, because uh, the, the projector, and then you um, calculate the function on the second eigenvalue and multiply it by the complement of the projector. So to find these um, projectors uh, 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 and the eigenvalues, we um, call the function to um, calculate the projector based on the Clifford. And because this, we know this Clifford at this time only has uh, vector, uh, vector or bivector information that is in one direction, we generate a projector that is in that direction. A projector is a um, paravector that is idempotent. So if you multiply it by itself, it is equal to itself. And then um, if you multiply a projector by its complement, it gives you zero. And then it's also something that is not invertible. And so it doesn't have an in inverse. Um, and so it's kind of unique to the matrix. Uh, ma matrices have sort of a, a characteristics where they cannot refer to matrix. And to find the eigenvalues, then, you just take the projector and kind of uh, multiply the clipper from the right and left on the projector. Then we have our op opportunity to specialize that to the real, imaginary, or complex value. And, and we can pass it back out to be used. So for uh, clippers that have uh, grade one and grade two um, components, that these would be like a biparavector or sort of the general case of the algebra physical space. We have three special cases that we have to handle. Uh, cases when this biparavector is nilpotent, cases where it's already collinear in, in sort of the general case. So cases where it's nilpotent, we have to do 
something that's um, similar to the Jordan normal form calculation that's done in matrices. If it's collinear, we can just use the, the existing <coughs> function we already described to uh, call that. And then in, in the general case, otherwise we have to um, boost the uh, paravector or, or um, by paravector to be collinear. And then we can call the inspector decomposition on, on the uh, collinear portion and then restore it to its initial boosted um, state. So for the nilpotent case, um, uh, a nilpotent uh, is, is a cliffer with a uh, bipara vector um, that uh, it's something that cannot be made collinear. It, it would be sort of equivalent to a non-diagonalizable matri matrix, and that's morphism. Uh, nilpotent um, pair vectors have grade one and grade two parts that are equal in magnitude and orthogonal, and uh, they square to zero. Um, and so we use something that's similar to the Jordan normal form of the calculation. Uh, so it requires a function and the derivative of the function. And then we know that the eigenvalues are just the scalar part of the, the cliffer. And we can apply the function to the eigenvalues. And then the, we add that to the derivative of the function of, at the eigenvalues and then multiply it by the vicar vector. And so that will give is sort of the equivalent um, uh, calculation of that function. We also uh, have to, uh, um, for this uh, general case, we need to uh, be able to boost the uh, bipara vector uh, to make the grade one and grade two elements collinear. Um, so this is this is actually something that uh, is patterned after a relativistic uh, electrodynamics uh, problem of finding a relativistic velocity where the electric and magnetic fields are collinear, and uh, so um, so we are going to try and uh, come up with a transform that will, when properly constructed, um, mix mix the real and imaginary um, vectors so that uh, the grade one and grade two will be collinear. So this, uh, to describe this algorithm, we, we, if we have an arbitrary cliffer that's got a vector and a bivector um, and it's oriented in some way, we want to do a change of basis so that we'll find uh, the new E2 direction to be um, orthogonal to vector and by vector be normal to the plane and then we can uh, make the E3 direction to be in the sum of uh, the vector and the by vector and then the E1 direction to be orthogonal and then we can find after uh, doing a uh, inner product or, or dot product on these directions get the components in, in the E3 direction and the E1 direction and uh, using this uh, arctangent formula, uh, generate the boost, uh, scalar boost, that'll be in the direction of E2. And then we take the exponential of that to get the, the boost uh, uh, rapidity. But if we get, uh, take the exponential of that to get the boost, and then we can transform it to get the vector and by vector to be orthogonal, or uh, collinear. And then we'll be able to uh, do the calculation as a normal collinear vector. So uh, I've, we've, uh, we've tested this with a quick check. Um, we used it to check uh, various uh, laws and trig identities, trig identities uh, that would be fine. Found uh, it's, it still has issues that you kind of expect from dealing with double precision arithmetic with the condition number uh, having a, a large difference between the singular values or, um, or and usually it's triggered when you're kind of by a pole of one of uh, the functions that are in say like a trig identity or something. 
So these are the trig identities that we tested to. It's a little bit of a busy uh, chart, but um, and then so um, that was uh, useful. Found found several bugs in my software, and then also benchmarked with Criterion. Um, based the benchmark off of the uh, in-body benchmark that's on the computer language benchmark scheme by uh, Brandon Merrick, uh, Max Sinovic, and then uh, convert, converted that into a criterion benchmark. Um, found a uh, problem with GHC, uh, <laughs> bug report uh, 15304. Appears to have some issue with the worker wrapper transformation that causes the simplifier to blow up when you compile it to load two. And all, all these benchmarks were uh, performed on a uh, Core i7 Extreme uh, 3960 with 64 gigs of RAM. So for the in body benchmark, um, this, is, uh, this is done with uh, 50 million steps. It's uh, kind of um, simulates the sun and the gas giants, and, uh, and this over time, uh, GHC uh, 7.8, uh, 7.10, and 8.0 kind of got slightly slower and slower, um, and then there was a pretty good um, improvement in speed for GHC 8.2 and 8.4, and then when we turn this worker wrapper optimization off. Uh, we didn't get no uh, penalty in, in performance. So this is a log graph of the compile time. And this shows um, for GHC 7 and 8.0, it's compiling and took approximately uh, four minutes uh, to compile. Then at 8.2 and 8.4, it jumped up to 27 minutes. And then with uh, FNO worker wrapper, turning that worker wrapper off, it compiled in 45 seconds. Also in memory use, uh, the GHC 7 uh, uh, through 8.0 compiled in about three and a half gigabytes. Then when we went to uh, GHC 8.2 and 8.4, got up to about 32 gigabytes. And then turning off uh, the worker wrapper optimization, it compiled in at um, about 650 megabytes. And so um, that wraps up the presentation. Uh, any questions? Some implementation in Haskell, but haven't finished it all. Was it Chris Dornan? Yeah, it was him, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, How yeah. does that relate to what you just talked about? So it would be sort of this, a similar algebra. Yeah. Right? Uh, different uh, prop. So I know uh, Chris Dornan's work, I don't know him, but I know that he usually works uh, in uh, space time algebra, which is sort of a geometric algebra of. Minkowski space time, so it's, it's more of a four dimensional uh, problem. And uh, I, I did look at the code that he had published in it. It was, um, it, I believe, it was using more like a list type of data structure to right. contain all of the uh, uh, grades. Uh, and so I, I found that lists are uh, perhaps not the best for performance and, and stuff like that. And, um, so that's kind of why I went to the algebra data type uh, and found that that is uh, <coughs> like in the uh, in body uh, benchmark, all of that kind of just um, compiles down to sort of like what you get with a handwritten written code, all the constructors kind of uh, disappear <laughs> and it's, it uh, optimizes away from the inline. So what uh, you you just mentioned that there's a space-time uh, 
model of, of physical space as well. Are there other comparable libraries to what you've written that you are aware of? Uh, so there are, um, there are two other ones that are up on Hackage as well that are um, uh, pretty well developed. Uh, but they're more for like a general uh, a general case of a Clifford algebra, like a up to infinite uh, dimension, right? So um, this is all specialized for the algebra of physical space, the three dimensional one. Um, but both of those also use uh, like a list type data structure to hold the, the uh, basis vectors, but uh, multi vectors and stuff. So that's, uh, I didn't understand the benchmark, uh, the baseline. What was the baseline for the benchmark? Yeah, so the baseline is uh, the code oh, okay. off of the, oh, that, okay. yes, from this uh, computer language benchmarks game. And so what they did there is sort of hand code up all the vector math. And then, uh, um, and so by just taking that and replacing it with, um, the uh, CL3 type um, stuff for vectors and scalars and, um, gave pretty close to the same performance as, as the uh, um, that. So, this definitely almost the same. Yeah, oh, almost. I have uh, one yes. other question, just a more complication oriented question. So, if I wanted to write like a, like a physical simulator, then then like, would I have to loop this into some kind of a back handler in order to get everything to like, model model the world correctly? Is that, or how, how would that, how do you go about like, that construction? Or would you just give me a point or two? So, uh, like for the benchmark or whatever, it's all using, it's using um, storable, uh, so, so it's like kind of a, I won't add uh, working in I won't add, but the this library itself is is I want to say it's more like almost a primitive or something. For, mm -hmm. uh, it handles it handles sort of the, the algebra itself. But it doesn't really um, do all the um, I don't know, like for uh, perhaps like that that uh, a pair and functor APL. Uh, Presentation cycle. That's using data structures that you can probably use to make simulations and stuff like that. Or this would be something that would fit inside of that, that uh, vector or matrix or whatever to, to do that. Let's go. Quick, oh, sorry. sorry. Quick question about the, the baseline here. Is that Barnes Hut or is it just a pairwise? Uh, you know the algorithm used there. So this is a uh, yeah. So for this uh, computer language benchmarks game, they try and use the same algorithm over probably about twenty or thirty different programming languages to try and see the performance between. Uh, is it is it the a square one? You know the simple one or is it the Barnes hut? Uh, you know the or uh, for the integration method. You know, for the process. Yes. I mean, it is like ten for this benchmarks. So. Hmm? N is about 10 for this benchmark, so there will be no point reading by myself. You have 10 power visits. Oh, it's only 10? It's the solar system. system. Oh, this is our solar system? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So the gas giants yeah. and the suns. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah. it's 50 million yeah. steps. It's an yeah. 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 Euler, uh, Euler um, integration scheme in this one. Oh, okay. You have to use the same algorithm. Actually, have a one on one comparison. Actually, how the other languages compare? So, uh, Haskell in this one is actually, I want to say, maybe two times slower than C or something. It's, it, it actually does pretty good. Um, C, I think, is fast. You know, C, Fortran, C, are all pretty fast. And that's sort I mean, like at the fastest tier. And then, Haskell's sort of one tier up with Java and maybe a few other uh, programming languages. But yeah, it's a good web website to go to. They have all the statistics. And then this is not the only uh, uh, 
uh, in body benchmark, but they actually benchmark it against maybe 10 or 15 different uh, um, uh, problems. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you.